What's going on guys, it's Quick Gaming, and today I'm back with another video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the 10 worst contracts in NBA history. Now some of these players did get injured and that's why their contracts are this bad. Some of them had legal or personal problems, and some of them were just flat out overpaid. Now if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. We are getting close to 20k subscribers, so it would really help me out if you guys would subscribe. And also let me know down in the comments what list you guys want next, and yeah, enjoy the video. Starting off at number 10, we have Rafe Lafrent. Now he was signed by the Dallas Mavericks during the 2002-2003 season for 70 million over 7 years. Now he was a pretty good player, but not worth anywhere near 70 million. He was able to block some shots and could also make some plays off the dribble or catch and shoot at the three point line. But his biggest problems were his injuries and his ineffectiveness. And a seven year commitment was way too much for him. After only one year, he was set to trade to the Boston Celtics. Number nine, Vin Baker. Here's another seven year contract worth 86 million with the Seattle Supersonics. Now, unlike most players on this list, Vin Baker actually did deserve the contract he got. He was a four-time All-Star and also an Olympic gold medalist. He was a talented scorer and a pretty good rebounder. In the year he signed the contract in 1999, he averaged almost 20 and 10 during his first season with the Supersonics, but that would be his final productive season in the NBA. Now he was battling with major alcohol problems off the court and that pretty much cost him his career. Number 8, Penny Hardaway. Now everybody knows about the dominance that Penny Hardaway brought to the NBA from 1993 to 1997. He was a phenomenal player for the Orlando Magic, but during the end of his time with the Orlando Magic, he started battling with a bunch of knee problems. That didn't seem to matter to Phoenix, who took the chance on him, gave him 7 years worth $87 million, which again, fully healthy, Penny would deserve a contract like this. And the Suns did not take any consideration of the injury risks that he had when he tore his knee right before free agency. The Suns signed him in 1999, and in his second year with them, Penny re-entered his knee, and he would never score more than 12 points a game in his career. Number 7, Eric Dampier. Eric Dampier was an average center until the 0304 season, which was his contract year, and he averaged 12 points per game and 12 rebounds, which made him a valuable center in free agency, and the Dallas Mavericks were willing to take a chance on him in the 2004 season, giving him $73 million over 7 years. Now despite him playing well during his contract year, he would never score more than 10 points or average more than 10 rebounds per game in his career. Number 6, Larry Hughes. After striking out with free agents Ray Allen and Michael Redd, the Cavaliers in deep need of a guard went with their third option which was Larry Hughes. Hughes, another player who performed during his contract year, averaging 22 points per game with the Washington Wizards, was given 70 million over 5 years from the Cavs. Now the hopes was that he could help LeBron James, but Hughes only cared about scoring and he didn't even do that very well anymore. He was traded shortly after. Number 5, Jerome James. The Knicks signed Jerome James for a total of 30 million dollars over 5 years. Now although this contract doesn't seem like a lot of money for NBA contract standards, Jerome James came into the deal averaging 5 points per game, 3.5 rebounds, and 1.3 blocks. He was out of shape and another major bust for the New York Knicks free agency, which continues to be a trend over this list. James would never average more than 3 points per game again after signing, and he dealt with major injuries at the end of his contract. Number 4, Eddie Curry. Again, another New York Knicks signing. He was signed for $60 million over the span of 6 years in the 2005-2006 NBA season. Eddie Curry was considered a talented offensive player, but that was it. He couldn't rebound, he couldn't block any shots, and he was out of shape, and he couldn't do anything other than score. Curry played a total of 10 games from the Knicks from 2008-2010, and was still able to make $19 million. Number 3, Stephon Marbury. Marbury signed a 4-year extension worth $76 million with the Phoenix Suns. However, this contract wasn't supposed to set in until the 05-06 season, but Marbury was traded from the Suns to the Knicks in 2004. Marbury was notorious for having problems with his coaches, which led to him missing a number of games during the season. At first, the New York fans were really happy with this trade, but he quickly became a villain in New York, as the Knicks only made the playoffs once during Marbury's career in New York, and they were swept in the first round. Number 2, Allen Houston. Coming off almost 20 points per game during his first few seasons with the Knicks, and also making some big shots during the playoff. It didn't seem like a bad deal when the Knicks gave Allen Houston $100 million over six years. However, he kept suffering from reoccurring knee injuries, which led him to retire. That made Allen Houston the league's second highest paid player for two years after he played his last game with the Knicks. Allen Houston will always be remembered for his incredible game winner in game five against the top seeded Miami Heat in the first round, which led them to the 1999 finals. But after he signed the contract, that was basically all he could be remembered for. Number one, Gilbert Arenas. Washington should have seen this coming from a mile away. After a season in which he played only 13 games, Washington signed Arenas for 6 years worth $111 million, and he would never play more than 40 games in a season for the Wizards, 
after he signed this contract. This would come from a number of injuries and also his legal problems. Now the funny thing is, is the Wizards offered him a max contract worth $127 million, but Arenas took less trying to save the money to build a championship team around him. Other than that, Arenas also admitted that he probably had the worst contract in NBA history. So that is it for my list for the 10 worst contracts in NBA history. Make sure to let me know what you guys think of this list, if I missed anybody, if you guys would have changed the rankings up a bit, let me know down in the comments below, and also make sure you leave a like on this video, let's try and hit 200 likes on this video, I would really appreciate it, and yeah, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, we are on the road to 20k like I said, so make sure you guys subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm out guys, peace.